Oh, and next up is Lions for Lambs, the latest well-intentioned, ripped-from-the-headlines excursion into American politics and foreign policy. Directed by Robert Redford from a script by Matthew Michael Carnahan, who also wrote The Kingdom, it tells three simultaneous stories that are meant to illustrate something about the current state of the world. In Washington, a television reporter is given an exclusive interview with a powerful Republican senator. You're about to implement another new strategy, regardless of the human cost or the financial cost, because you predict we thought that deeply maybe about the human cost when we were planning this strategy. What were your estimates exactly? What I can say is that this strategy has patience and determination at its core. That's Tom Cruise as the senator and Meryl Streep as the journalist. And their cat and mouse game is the best part of Lions for Lambs because the two of them are such nimble and intense performers. Their segment of the story is meant to illustrate how the press is bullied and fooled by those in power. The scenes between Redford's Professor Malley and Andrew Garfield as his student are an attack on the apathy of the younger generation. But what you need to know, Todd, no lifeguards watching anymore. You're on your own. You're your own man, and the decisions you make now are yours and yours alone from here until the end. The two soldiers, Derek Luke and Michael Pena, shown here back when they were Mali students, demonstrate the sacrifice that some members of that generation are nonetheless willing to make. We could all, with all the degrees and all the money we're going to make, go hide in a big house with high walls. Oh, when it hasn't a big house with high walls been the American dream? Uh -huh. July 5th, 1776. What about December 8th, 1941? September 12th, 2001? There are some interesting ideas in this movie, but I found it both dramatically inert and intellectually muddled. It's not only tedious, but it felt strangely out of touch with the real world that it's trying to illuminate. I'm very much in favor of movies that try to tackle contentious political issues, but Lions for Lambs, in my opinion, fumbles badly. I admire this film. I'm recommending this film, Tony. I okay. think there are a lot of uh, very clear ideas here, and it's not a lecture because you get both sides of the argument. I agree that some segments work better than others. The Tom Cruise, Meryl Streep dynamic is great. I mean, yeah. he's, he's so perfectly cast as this ambitious Republican senator, and she's very good as a veteran journalist. There are a lot of flaws in this thing. First and foremost, I mean, well, not maybe foremost, but one of the things is she's a television journalist, and apparently there's no camera there's allowed no camera. when she gets her exclusive yes. interview well, there's, with him. There's but that. that's okay. He wants to give her something sort of kind of also, off the record. he's a senator you know. who's somehow in charge of commanding military forces and setting military strategy. Which well, is also you know what? I think we sometimes live in a world where maybe the commander-in-chief isn't the commander-in-chief, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> I really like the stuff between uh, Redford and the young kid. I thought that I thought that was good. The story with the two soldiers, although the two actors are very good, I thought it, it, it didn't ring true for me, I have to, I have to say. And the way that ends, I, I almost think like they, they make a decision that's a little butch and Sundance when they don't need to, and yeah. that's all I'll say about that. Uh, but overall, it's smart. It, it has so many good lines and provocative ideas compared to a lot of junk that's out there. I gotta See, recommend I this just, movie. I didn't feel like the ideas were, were being presented clearly or strongly enough. I mean, I thought there was an intention. Where? Where are they not being presented strongly? Uh, well, Strongly and clearly being, enough. You know, to say that it's muddled or that they're, you know, that it's just meandering, I didn't feel that at all. Well, I, I just, I, I thought, for one thing, that the connection between the different stories and the takeaway from each mm. story is what worked in, in a sense at, at cross purposes. Because um, I think that, uh, you know, you had this, this, this political face off between the journalist and the senator, right. and then. You know, the thing that's happening with Redford and the kid, where he's talking about, well, what is he saying exactly? Go out, oh, uh, do something, yeah, care about something. Yeah, that's what he's saying. And he's saying it to a kid who knows all the tricks and turns and is kind of anticipating it. But I think he finally does get through to the kid. Uh, and I found that to be, you know, believable and I didn't, inspirational. I didn't find it so. I, uh, I wished. I think I wanted to believe this movie very badly. I understand I what you're saying. Well, I, it's definitely flawed, but I am recommending it. <laughs>